would like to introduce Professor Judith Barilan from the Barilan University, and she's going to speak about the accuracy of the Hebrew Wikipedia and, the, uh, and its articles, how good they are or not, according to her research she has made. Okay, so th is this on? Okay. So this is a joint work with Etiari, Dr. Etiari and Professor Shifra Barksonorbi from the Department of... Okay, this is what I asked. Is it on now? Yes. Okay. Okay, then I have to... Okay. So this is joint work with Etiari and Shifra Barksonorbi from the Department of Information Science at bar University. So let's start with a quote from Jimmy Wells. So perhaps we don't really want to know uh, the, pr the process of writing Wikipedia articles, but per I think we want to know if the outcome is tasty. So sort of evaluate the articles. Now the question is, who should evaluate? So my answer in this talk is experts, although uh, the opinions of the general public are important as well, and we also ask the general public in, a, a, in another part of this research, but I'm not talk, going to talk about this today. So let's go to some previous studies. Perhaps this is, well, not perhaps, this is the most famous one uh, from, from Nature in 2005. Uh, one of the, this actually is the most cited article with the name Wikipedia on it, if you check it on uh, Scopus, which is a, an inter, a huge inter, interdisciplinary database of, of uh, scholarly articles. So um, what they did, they sent out 42 articles from various disciplines, uh, but, uh, and the articles were both from B Wikipedia and, and from Britannica in parallel, and experts were asked to evaluate. The findings were that, that uh, Wikipedia is not worse than Britannica, and this came as a sort of a big surprise to the general public at that time. Um, there were, of course, other uh, such uh, evaluation studies. Uh, for example, this one, where the outcomes were less favorable for Wikipedia. Here, Wikipedia was uh, compared to a number of uh, encyclopedias, uh, only on nine articles. And uh, the finding was that uh, Wikipedia was, was uh, less accurate than the other sources. And another study, which I should say is not really fair, because here Wikipedia is compared to a, a subject-specific database on drug information, and then Wikipedia is a general encyclopedia, so it's not surprising that it came out to be sort of worse than, than these uh, Medscape drug reference uh, database. Okay. And then there were some, okay, this last study from, that was published in First Monday by Chesney in 2006, it's not really an evaluation study, but 55 academics uh, evaluated articles, half of them evaluated articles within their subject uh, area, and half of them uh, just random articles from Wikipedia. And the a surprising result was that the expert evaluations were higher than the non-expert evaluation. Then there were a, num a large, quite large number of uh, evaluation, small evaluation studies that were uh, initiated by, by uh, newspapers and magazines. This one, this one is from just, just a small sample from 2005 in South Africa. Um, and then the, the other one is from The Independent. And here's another study from uh, PC Pro. Um, and, and then you can go to this Wikipedia site and see a large number of other studies that were carried out by newspapers and magazines. 
So now I'm going to switch to the Hebrew, Hebrew uh, Wikipedia, because that's the topic of my talk. Uh, so what has been done here, and first I just want to give you a very quick review of the Hebrew Wikipedia. It was launched in July 2003. As, uh, as of today, it has more than 120,000 articles. And uh, just to compare it, the, the major encyclopedia in Hebrew is the Encyclopedia Ivrit, or Hebrew Encyclopedia, and which has an estimated uh, 30,000 uh, um, articles in it. And th there are, okay, so it's, so the Hebrew Wikipedia is, is just uh, quite large. And we only found one previous uh, evaluation study that was initiated by a newspaper and was published uh, by Mariv. It was published in 2007. Uh, seven articles were sent to uh, experts, and you see uh, uh, the results were not very good. Also, the title of the article is, uh, the entry is doubtful. Uh, so our study, our objective was to have a thorough evaluation of Hebrew Wikipedia articles by experts. And as I said, this is part of a larger study, and the study is uh, funded by the uh, Israeli Internet Society. So experts. So we wanted to have experts who are willing to do the work. So we decided that our experts are going to be PhD students, postdocs, or young, young researchers, because they are usually quite involved in, in they know the literature in, in their specific areas of uh, expertise, and probably they are more willing to participate in such a research than uh, um, professors, for example. So we had 60 experts. We, they filled in a demographic questionnaire, including uh, the a description, a free text description of their areas of expertise, and then we tried to match some articles to them. And, and if it didn't work out well at first, then, then we had some dialogue with them to decide on, on what articles to evaluate. So each expert was asked to evaluate four articles. One of them was a featured article, then a regular article, an article that needed expansion, that's a, that's a community template on it, and an article that needed the rewrite. And the articles were sent to these experts as uh, word files, which allowed them to easily comment and highlight stuff they liked or didn't like in the articles. And these community templates were removed, but of course they could have looked up the uh, items on, uh, on the web, on Wikipedia. So just a, a word about featured articles. I'm sure you all know these are sort of uh, articles that uh, Wikipedians vote, vote on to decide if, if, if the article is really, it should be featured or not, and it undergoes a, quite a thorough editing process in, in, the, in the process of voting. So there are, in, in Hebrew Wikipedia, there are 665, well, more or less, because I'm, made these slides two or three days ago, featured articles in the Hebrew uh, Wikipedia out of 120,000 articles, which makes uh, uh, five, uh, 5, 000, one in, uh, five in 1,000 articles instead. And, and if you compare it with the data for the English Wikipedia, it's only one in about 1,000 articles. So there are relatively uh, more featured articles in Hebrew Wikipedia than in the English one. So what we asked the, uh, the uh, experts to do was to report separately on each evaluated article. We asked them to provide their general impressions specifically asked about if there, they notice any factual errors, anything to say about the writing styles and errors of omission. 
Um, so, so don't be surprised that, uh, okay, so with this attitude, of course, they looked out for, for the more negative things, but of course, they, they only noted positive things, so don't be alarmed with the results that you'll see later on. And we also asked them to, to mark the value to the reader, to the potential reader on a scale of one to six, to provide a short explanation for that as well. And there were several Likert scale quest questions, also on a scale of one to six, on writing style, reliability, neutrality, bias, accuracy, and coverage. And finally, they were asked to give an overall grade between 1 and, uh, and 100. And if they still had something else to say, they were welcome to do that. Now, this they did for each article uh, separately. And then we asked them to choose the best and, uh, and, and the worst uh, article among the four, four articles they were asked to evaluate. Okay, so they did quite a lot of works and they offered some monetary gift for participation. So in, uh, in the next part of the uh, talk, I'm going to present some descriptive statistics for the quantitative data, rankings and gradings, and some statistical tests we, we ran. We wanted to know that the, if there are differences in the grades given to different types of articles, like featured, regular, expand, and rewrite. And we ran this uh, uh, test as within subject tests because some, some experts may be more critical overall than the others. So that was the right type of test to do. And uh, if at first, I'm going to describe the results of the content analysis of the textual comments. So, so we read the textual comments, identified themes, and defined content categories and then classified some of the comments. Two, two coders did that. Then they did some reliability testing, and it, this led to refining the, the content categories. So we had quite a large number of categories. You can see them here. Uh, as you see, more negative ones than positive. But as I said, this, this, could have been, this was expected to be the case. And uh, okay, so let's see the results. So we, so it is, I mean, the evaluations for free text evaluations. So we had 895. So overall, we had 60 experts. Each expert evaluating four articles. That's 240 articles altogether. Although there was some overlap because there were some articles that, especially the featured ones, that were evaluated by more than one expert. Uh, so we extracted 895 uh, coding units from the 240 articles and about one one uh, fourth of the articles were, uh, of the comments were positive. And you see the uh, common categories uh, most frequent one was missing topics. And in the, on the bottom you see that, that oh, so here the percentages out are out of the 895 coding units, but if we look at the 240 articles, for 164, that's uh, about two-thirds, uh, the uh, experts noted that something was missing from the article or it, they or the article was not detailed enough for some subtopics. So in the next few slides, I'll bring you a few uh, quotations, like for missing topics, um, no mistakes, uh, needs extensions, and like sometimes this means that, that parts, of, parts of the article are not, not detailed enough. Um, Okay, so this says, that in my opinion, there is a disproportion in the coverage. Um, there are some quotations on uh, bad or misleading phrasings, mistakes. Also, this is a positive comment on good phrasing, missing links and references. Now, there is there, there, there were additional categories that were less frequent, like bias, 
occurred in about 19% per, of the cases, or the, the article being not up to date, or not the, uh, or, or some, some comment on the quality of the links and references. And then just a few interesting ones. This one on the top says that it is clear that most of the information is from uh, the tourist guide course. Perhaps some credit should, should have been given to the, to, to the course guide. This was the expert who turned out to be the expert who evaluated the article and her name never appeared in the article itself. And uh, only just in, quite interesting, they had, I mean, you see they were quite critical about the articles, but they didn't think, except for one participant, they didn't, or at least they didn't tell us that they were going to correct what they saw in Wikipedia. But there was one participant who said that she, she was going to do that within the next few days. I'm, I'm not, I don't know if she actually did that or not. Yes. Just, is Victoria Dronina arrived yet? No? No. Okay. <laughs> so, so it, now let's look at the, the uh, different article types, uh, featured, regular, expand, and rewrite. You see that the largest number of positive comments were for featured articles and that's a good sign of uh, that the community and the experts sort of think alike it's about 42 percent of the of all the comments and also 42 percent of the comments for the featured articles were positive uh, one more thing that we've checked we looked at are the best and worst articles by article type. And I mean, I hope you recall that we asked them to choose among the four they each, each expert evaluated. We asked them to choose the best and the worst. Didn't really define what is best and worst. It's sort of subjective. But you see, in, well, this can be read in two, in two ways. <laughs> in two-thirds of the cases, the featured article was chosen the best, showing that featured articles are actually probably the better articles in Wikipedia. On the other hand, you can say, well, this, this percentage should have been higher. We'd expect it to be 90 or 95 percent of the cases. And that doesn't happen. But, uh, but on the other hand, you, saw, you can see that only uh, in two cases uh, the featured article was chosen as worst. Or you can ask why this actually happened. So you can interpret it the way you like it. Now let's go to the quantitative analysis. With this, were, I recall the numbers here are, are on a scale from one to six. And, and you can just see, just by looking, and then I'll tell you the uh, uh, results of the statistical test that for bias there's no difference and uh, but for all the other uh, 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 items that we asked about the featured articles did much better than than the other ones also for overall impression so and then then we did the significance test and the feature articles uh, seem to be, well, that we saw that were seem to be considerable better than the others. And, and the within subject significant tests prove this, except for bias that we saw that there were no clear differences. Uh, the featured article was the articles were different from the rest of the types. And there were no significant differences between the other types. So, even though the, the first lecture is still not here, but I, I'm coming to my last slide. Uh, first of all, uh, there's always room for improvement. And second, I'd like to emphasize again that you, Wikipedia editors should not be discouraged by negative comments, because when you ask for evaluation, usually the negative aspects are emphasized. Uh, I know that when they ask for for course evaluations, students 
try to say the things they didn't like and not the things that they do like. And, they, and finally, the featured articles are considered to be much better than, other type, than the other types, but according to the experts. And of course, there is much more analysis that we can do. We can go into the specific articles and see the type of, uh, of, of comments. Also, we can look at the articles that were evaluated by more than one expert to see if they agree or disagree on their evaluations. And that is all. Do you want to ask if you have any questions? Yeah. OK, thank you so much. Uh, as you can see, we still don't have uh, our first speaker here, so we're just rearranging our schedule accordingly. Uh, that gives us a few minutes for questions, if anybody has. Okay. I noticed that the expand category was faring a little bit better than the regular category on many. Uh, yeah. Could, you, could it be because somebody bothered to analyze this article and uh, mention that it needs expansion? Or can you I, give I, I don't know. Someone suggested me the uh, explanation that the, except for the featured articles, uh, anyone can put on these uh, templates. So maybe someone put on the, the ex needs expansion template and someone else edited it afterwards but didn't bother to remove the template. So this could be a reason as well, yes. So something along the line, what you suggested. Um, has any of the uh, specific feedback from the experts been shared with uh, the Hebrew Wikipedia community? And if not, is, are there any plans to do that? We can do that if, if the community is interested. Anybody? <laughs> if the gist of the findings is that there is a fairly high correlation between what the audience votes on, making it a featured article, and what the experts evaluate. I guess the next question is, are there other categories of criteria that you can correlate your experts' judgments with? In particular, can you correlate those with measures of depth, incoming links, and uh, frequency of viewing? And uh, have you thought about doing these things? Yeah, we can check that. We haven't done that, but we don't have that many evaluations and on that many articles. Especially, I mean, there could be about 30 featured articles. I don't know if it's enough to, to do an extensive study of that. Hello, thank you for your presentation. I'm aware that some scholars have researched the consistency of peer review among experts in academic publishing, and I was wondering if you had a sense of how these expert reviews compared to peer reviews in, say, journal publications, which surprisingly enough are not at all consistent. There's a really wide swing in, in peer review as well. So what I've noticed that for, for articles that, they're, that were evaluated by several experts, <laughs> in some cases there were quite different opinions, but I don't have um, more on that for now. Hello. Uh, did the experts know that they are, they are evaluating articles from Wikipedia? Yes. Okay. Um, do you but they didn't know the, what the type of article. But maybe the, um, comparing to experts that evaluate and evaluating uh, texts that, are, that they don't know where they come from, uh, maybe the knowing that uh, the texts come from Wikipedia uh, made their uh, uh, opinions biased? Maybe. Okay. But every time in sort of young researchers, they're exposed to, to the internet and to Wikipedia, I, I don't think so. And we got some very good evaluations as well. Okay, okay last question. Did you take articles from all over Wikipedia? And uh, as a follow-up, did you find a correlation between certain areas, maybe science or history, and the quality of the articles? Well, most of our experts came from the social sciences, just a few from life, maybe from the sciences. And again, only 60 experts, so there's not much uh, place room to, to do further breakdowns. OK, really last question. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Um, I was kind of wondering, since for, um, I think that 
expert review is important for any Wikipedia, but my concern largely is how the st- um, how expert study can apply, let's say, to smaller Wikipedias, let's say, in minority languages or in languages where, let's say, Wikipedia is the only encyclopedia. So how can we measure, let's say, the quality of, let's say, an article, say, for the Tagalog Wikipedia, which is the only Wikipedia, which is the only encyclopedia in my language at least, with the quality of another encyclopedia if, let's say, that's the only encyclopedia that exists for that language. But, but in this study, we didn't compare the Wikipedia articles to another encyclopedia. So we, 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 we evaluated, the experts evaluated the Wikipedia articles as they are. So that, that could, have, could be done in Tagalog if there are enough speakers of Tagalog to do that. Again, thank you so much. Um, Now I'd like to call up Jeremy Chan for his presentation. It's going to be about a case study in Hong Kong. This one? Oh, good. bit nervous because it sounds professional <laughs> because the frankly I didn't prepare a really professional presentation because I think the case study is rather a pretty simple one so I actually prepared some more background information and first some background information about myself and <laughs> I'm Jeremy from Wikimedia Hong Kong used to be a president not now <laughs> and just an uh, advisor, or on my card is consultant, who we are enough. And the next one, guy next to me. Hi, um, I'm Derek, also from Wikimedia Hong Kong, and um, I'm not a board member either. So, um, but I'm, I'm a volunteer involved in some of the daily operations of the chapter. Uh, so we have, to, actually, it's, a, it's an essay, actually, it's, and also a research. And my role in this research is a co-author. So actually, I'm not really good at those kind of research stuff. So I actually prepare some more about the background of this research. Firstly, because we are actually, this research is related to a Wikimedia Hong Kong project. It's named uh, Liberal Study Two Kids. So what is liberal studies? You, the people in the States or United Kingdom may be familiar with. But in Hong Kong, it's not, an, it's not a it's totally new thing. And it's related to uh, educational reform. And thanks to this guy, uh, his name is Anthony Leung, and he was an initiator of this kind of education reform. So what is the reform? Yeah, Chinese moms and Western moms. Because it's kind of, because we used to have an pretty old curriculum in Hong Kong. Next slide, please. Yes, I suppose you understand that? <laughs> that that's, that's Confucius words. So we used to recite stuff quite a lot, reciting and remembering, rem- memorizing, and then write and write and write again. And suddenly, we had something called liberal studies. Then they throw all the books away and trying to tell you that you should learn yourself, to know yourself, and to know the things around yourself. So we have a lot of strange things. So actually, the author of this essay is the guy who, decide, who designed this curriculum, and who is like this, yeah? His titles and stuff, and he's not here, so I'm here. So. Why, so Wikimedia Hong Kong have think of the project, thought about the project that starting to talking about more about the 
liberal studies. So why why Wikipedia is related to this pro, uh, program? Because liberal studies they have so many curricula, so so many curricula stuff is related to current affairs. Yeah, you can see Hong Kong today, modern China, globalization, public health. It seems all about the mo the recent things that nobody is can really have a book really update, update, update. The only thing is possible is Wikipedia. So we we but the problem is people is always questioning about Wikipedias, even in Hong Kong. So when I had to talk to the teach some teachers saying that we don't ask you to trust us and they are actually being stunned. So we are trying to using a media literacy agenda and a framework to see interviewing some Wikipedia themselves by, of course, by, by Dr. Chen. Okay, we are or Chen's. And so, um, we, so we, we were founding some spots by where, and we transcript the, their, all, all the words the Wikipedia said, and then we try to find out with anything that really fits these points and then we are trying to pick it up and have a little statistic. So we call it this kind of stuff is meaningful units because we have some focus groups and then we transcripted everything and then we're trying to find this point and we have the statistics. So what is talking about? Because after all, focus group, you have to something to talk about. You just cannot talk about uh, how do you edit Wikipedia. So we had an article to talk about, and that is, the, of course, because we interviewed some Chinese Wikipedians, so we use the Chinese equivalent of this. So this is the Senkaku Islands, and it's a controversial thing between the Chinese and the Japanese. The Chinese don't call it Senkaku Islands, we call it Diao Yu Tai. Yeah, that, that, that fishing pavilion island. Yeah. Um, shameless plug, for more about this article, go to my presentation tomorrow called Wikipedia is Afraid of Governments. Sorry, this is, I didn't charge him for ads. <laughs> Next. Yeah. So we actually, from this yeah, focus group, we talk about the Wikipedians on their own thinkings on this Senkaku Islands, and and also what when they try to read analysis or even edit, when they how they found information. So we actually we have some, yeah, back put it back to the media literacy framework. So we found that in in a part of the information access, that means how the people get into the information, that Wikipedia was. Of course, because we, most Wikipedia are being taught this way, but because you know it's facing Wikipedians. So it's precise, it's a knowledge gateway instead of primary references. Yeah. And also we have in, in the second criteria of the media literacy, was, which is the analysis that the hints in Wikipedia articles largely helps the user that means, the, of course, the Wikipedia editors to evaluate the quality of that article, like number of contributions, discussions, re re revision history, internal links and footnotes, external links, and equivalent article in English. And the third criteria in the in media literacy framework is the information production is editing writing activities were in regular because in the in the, in the interviews that the even these wikipedians in hong kong of course they're not actually really fond of editing political articles and so they actually not really not really want to edit so only the 20% of the the meaningful units are found, so information production is not is not a usual and not a regular one. So that's the most of the case. 
So that's it, and it's pretty. Actually, it's pretty preliminary. I understand that because we just found a bunch of Wikipedians, so we don't have many control groups or stuff. So we are thinking of having more later because eventually this is just a part of Wikipedia. It's not not really the general public. That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, once again, we're gonna open this up to questions if anybody wants to ask these fine young gentlemen. <laughs> um, um, confession, I copied him. Deliberately or accidentally? Accidentally. Um, basically, we were trying to find something that's appropriate for the climate of Haifa that we can buy in Hong Kong, and he suggested that I go to this shop, and I happen to have gone to the same shop as he did, and bought the same hands. <laughs> you can read about that on Wikipedia. They have an article on shopping when going to Haifa. Um, no, unfortunately, that's not notable enough. <laughs> we probably have a wiki on it. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, um, other than pants, any other questions? <laughs> yeah. Is there any uh, government filtering or effort to control what goes on Wikipedia in Hong Kong? Uh, I don't think so. Um, Hong Kong is defined as part of the outside of China's Great Firewall, so so um, people from mainland China can't see what's in Hong Kong either. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. Very good. Thank you again, guys. <laughs> Tell Professor Chan that you uh, did him proud. And. Our next speaker is going to be, please tell me if I'm pronouncing this correctly, um, Yuri Perohanich from the Ukraine. <laughs> Almost right. <laughs> you can say your name for yourself. Thank you. Yuri Perohanich from Ukraine. Uh, let me start just a moment. I have to close this one. Do you want to use this microphone? No, different, just a moment. Okay. It's okay, and page down is here. Page up. Just, just. I think maybe here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me start from some disclaimer. This presentation was not prepared by me. It was prepared by Wikipedia from Ukraine, Andrei Bondarenko, who is composer, piano player, and administrator of Ukrainian Wikipedia. Uh, he was not uh, able to attend the conference, so asked me to uh, make the presentation. So you may ask me the question just to transmit them to the author of this presentation. Well, uh, I'll try to analyze uh, what is the structure of Wikipedia, so what is the structure of human knowledge, and what is the difference between con content of Wikipedia in different uh, versions of Wikipedia. Uh, there were, we used two uh, ways to, uh, it, it is very difficult to analyze all uh, three million articles in English Wikipedia or uh, 300,000 articles in Ukrainian Wikipedia, so it was uh, necessary to make some uh, selection, uh, to make some sample and analyze uh, the sample. There are two ways of in selecting articles. One way is just random selection, uh, for example, using the uh, so-called auto wiki browser. Uh, another way is to use uh, recursive analysis of categories using the same uh, tool, uh, auto wiki browser, and using a CAT scan. Uh, you see the error, the, the bias, depends on the quantity of uh, articles in uh, uh, the sample. Uh, and uh, uh, recursive category analysis gives us exact results if we have 
uh, transitive categorization. Uh, for example, in Polish Wikipedia, we have a good example, category Ukrainian music, well, with the mouse, is, oh, it's, I don't see. It uh, consists of uh, several subcategories, Ukrainian uh, piano players, Ukrainian vocalists, uh, uh, Ukrainian musical groups, and uh, for example, if we uh, look in uh, Czech Wikipedia, the category music consists of uh, music uh, uh, techniques uh, and audio techniques, uh, which in turn uh, consists of telephone and mobile telephone, which are far from music. Uh, so, and of course, you know that there are also uh, so-called circles, when one category belongs to another one, and it's also difficult to select articles. Well, uh, we used random selection for broad areas and a recursive analysis for uh, narrower, for example, if we wanted to analyze uh, some specific uh, area like uh, music. Uh, in uh, February this year, we had the situation when Ukrainian and Finnish Wikipedia uh, had the same uh, number of articles, uh, 255,000 articles. And uh, if we compare two Wikipedias, then we see that, uh, for example, in the uh, Finnish Wikipedia, they had much more articles about astronomy. We had much more about mining, the same about rivers, cities. Uh, f people in Finland uh, love music much more than in Ukraine, play more uh, PC games, and uh, also their sportsmen are much more popular. Uh, if we will look into the uh, special research concerning music, then, just a moment, let me find this text. Uh, this diagram uh, shows music-related articles in four Slavic Wikipedias. Uh, Ukrainian, Polish, Russian, and Czech. And we see that uh, this statistics indicates that uh, Polish Wikipedia has the largest numbers, number of music albums marked in blue colors, color, and, uh, but Ukrainian has relatively broader segment of musicians and musicology, yellow color. I don't see it here. Well, uh, uh, what the following uh, are general, general results uh, calculated using random sampling. We took eight Wikipedias. Uh, four largest Western Wikipedias, English, Deutsch, French, Italian, and four largest Slavic Wikipedias, uh, Polish, Russian, Ukrainian, and Czech. Uh, right uh, corner shows fragment of a table where sampled articles are sorted by subject and type. Uh, it's impossible to see anything here. A subject related to the field of science of or culture, for example, history of mathematics, well, uh, there are so-called type, table concerning type and table concerning subject. For example, an article related to music can be about person, example musician, or some event, example competition. On the contrary, the article about person can be related, for example, to music about musician or to sport about sportsman, and so on. Uh, here you can see a comparison of, of Western and Slavic Wikipedias by subject. Uh, these thematic areas uh, could be divided into three large groups. Society, science, and culture. Uh, Slavic Wikipedias have much more settlements, uh, I mean cities and regions. You can see them on the left uh, corner uh, in the bottom. and. Uh, uh, Western Wikipedias uh, have much more information about sport. It's on the right uh, 
corner. Uh, so you see also here uh, history, transport, nature, information technology, literature, etc. Um, next one. It's also difficult to explain something here to, to understand. Uh, here you, you could see four diagrams related to four Western Wikipedias, English, French, Italian, and German. You can see the features uh, publicated on project pages. So I tell only some general trends to save time. English and German Wikipedia has the smallest percent of uh, settlement, I mean uh, cities, uh, villages, uh, geographic uh, regions. Uh, instead, instead uh, German Wikipedia has a large percent of uh, society concerning articles, especially about politics. Uh, French uh, is very successful in uh, culture-related articles. Italian is uh, good in sport-related. And uh, uh, for example, uh, in English Wikipedia is 2% of sex-related articles. No other language samples such uh, this team was not found in any other Wikipedia in, in, in such extent. Uh, here are features uh, and uh, diagrams for Slavic Wikipedias. Only Czech Wikipedia has a significant percent of sport-related, uh, it's in the right corner, sport-related articles. Instead, Ukrainian is very big in uh, about uh, more than one third concerning uh, different geographic settlements. Uh, Polish is uh, very good in music and Russian in uh, politics and society related uh, teams, uh, related articles. Uh, if we com compare Slavic and uh, so-called Western Wikipedias, then uh, you see that uh, Slavic Wikipedia has more objects and concepts, and Western Wikipedia um, has more information about uh, persons and different uh, organizations, companies, etc. Um, Western Wikipedia by type. English and German Wik uh, Wikipedia are especially rich with person. It's yellow uh, color. And uh, while French and Italian with artworks, violet color. Um, very, uh, there is a lot of uh, disambiguation pages in German Wikipedia. It's uh, on the left, on the right corner, with great color. Uh, in opposite, uh, concepts. What is concepts? Concepts are most popular in Czech Wikipedia, while Polish Wikipedia has a relatively large sector in art work. Here is the same results in a bar chart. Uh, and uh, also one feature was analyzed, uh, which Wikipedias are original and which are uh, universal, more common. Uh, so we can see that uh, uh, Ukrainian Wikipedia and German Wikipedia, it's uh, on the left, uh, first on the left, and German in second from the right, um, are most original Wikipedias. So they uh, have difference between, uh, well, they, they are most original Wikipedias. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the author of this uh, presentation means that thinks that originality is uh, inspires uh, Wikipedians to work. Uh, smallest columns we see for Polish and Italian Wikipedias, uh, so they look much more than all other Wikipedias. Uh, uh, that, just a moment, page up. Uh, they are most un universal. Uh, so, 
Uh, uh, frankly speaking, I don't know. It's, it's not my presentation. So. <laughs> Uh, and resume. Different Wikipedias have the same thematic areas, but their proportions are different. This difference seems to be not relevant with size of Wikipedias. This difference seems to have some relevance with difference in culture of nations which they represent. I'm not sure if the Wikipedias represent the culture of nations, especially English. And uh, it's only start of researches and uh, there should be more research, uh, researches on these topics in the future. This presentation made by Andrei Bondarenko. There are here, uh, his users are one, A1, so you can contact and ask him questions. Thank you very much. Of course, <laughs> I can transmit those questions too. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, we can uh, ask them now. Hold on. I feel like I'm Rocky. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to ask, do you know what the, um, the largest grouping in the English Wikipedia is? The largest uh, subject, uh, according to the pie chart? <laughs> I can find it on the uh, diagram, but I'm not sure okay. if... Okay. Ask whether, is it possible to get a copy of the presentation? Yes, of course. It's, it, it will be published on the uh, website of Ikimani. Which website? The, uh, user A1? Uh, it, was, it will be published on the website of, Wiki, of Wikimania Wiki. What? Which website? Wikimania. 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 Uh, in uh, one month in uh, Lviv will, will be conference. Will be maybe uh, this uh, presentation uh, be more researched and again presented? Of course, it will be presented in in, in uh, September 16. We will have a, a big um, uh, book forum in uh, Lviv city in Ukraine, and there will be a wiki conference there of Ukrainian Wikipedia. Uh, so, uh, and Ukraine, organized, organized by Ukrainian Wikimedia, so you are uh, welcome uh, to visit uh, our country and uh, you can ask uh, questions uh, the author, author of this presentation. Are, are you also a pianist? No, 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 I'm not. Unfortunately, I'd like to. What? Okay, are there any other questions? Oh, Thank you. Fine. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so that's going to be it. It looks like we have a rather longish break now because we were missing that first speaker. Um, thank you all so much.